this is Wargaming Westeros, a show dedicated to the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game by Cool Mini or Not, which is not out yet. So what I'm doing currently is nerding out about Game of Thrones and speculating about this game. Spoilers ahead. Not big ones, but I'm also not going to watch what I say. You, you should be up to date at this point. So we already know the game will feature House Stark and House Lannister. Here are the other great houses that I think we will see in the game, and a few that we probably won't. House Baratheon and the Stormlands. I would say that House Baratheon is pretty much guaranteed to be in the second starter set that's coming out next spring. Since Stannis and Renly are both of House Baratheon, adding this house will give us four of the five kings we need for the War of Five Kings. Stannis and Renly are the obvious choices for leaders of this house, although I could see a rule that prevents you from feeling both of them at once. Obvious non-combat units would include Brienne of Tarth, who, although is a warrior, does not lead men in battle, and Melisandre, who I would imagine will have some amazing tactic cards. House Greyjoy of the Iron Isles. The Iron Isles are interesting because I would expect them to have one of the hardest-hitting, most aggressive infantry as well as weak thrall units with terrible morale values. Although I don't think they'll be given no cavalry units, thematically they should have the weakest cavalry units in the game, as the Ironborn are very unfamiliar with horses. Another cool thing about the Ironborn is that it's not unheard of for their women to fight alongside their men, so we'll get some model variation that isn't just guys with beards. There is a crazy amount of potential leaders for the Ironborn, from King Balon to his brothers Victarion, Euron, and the Damp Hair, Balon's children, Theon and Asha, that's Yara for you show-only folks, also make sense as leaders. Since I just named six potential leaders, some of them will probably be non-combat units instead. Damp hair makes sense. I could also see Theon or Asha in that role. House Martell and Dorne. As long as this game is successful, the Dornish entering the fray is inevitable. They're just so different from the rest of the Seven Kingdoms, both thematically and physically and they will bring a much-needed faction diversity to a game that's going to have a bunch of knights and guys with pikes. Although they are the most mysterious of the Seven Kingdoms, we can expect the Dornish to, to field excellent spearmen and cavalry. They are also the only group in Westeros, besides the Krennic men of House Stark, that regularly use poison, so I would expect a mechanic related to that. The Dornish have no stigma of being led by women, or apparently of them bearing arms. So again, we can probably expect some female miniatures in this faction. Oberyn Martell is the obvious leader for this faction, and his brother Doran make a great non-combat unit. I'd also expect to see some of Oberyn's children, the Sand Snakes, as well as Ario Hotar, House Targaryen. I know what you're thinking. I've already mentioned three houses, and I haven't brought up Danny yet. What gives? Obviously, we're getting Targaryens, and dragons that come with them. But from a mechanical perspective, I can see the creators of this game holding back for a bit. Daenerys' forces are composed of a lot of elite units. The Dothraki are some of the best cavalry in the game, and no one's arguing that the Unsullied are the best spearmen. And then there's the dragons, which are going to be the most powerful and most expensive units to field in this entire game. Now, Dany also has freedmen and swords to swell her ranks, and those units don't have to necessarily be elite. But if I was designing this game, I would want to let it grow and flex a little bit before I introduce flying, fire-breathing dragons into it. Jorah, Grey Worm, and Barriss and Selmy would all make great commanders, and Daenerys can lead as a commander or as a non-combat. And that's all the great houses I expect to see in the game. But let's run on the list so I can explain why the others seem so unlikely to me. House Tully and the Riverlands. The Riverlands aren't even one of the Seven Kingdoms, so why would they get their own faction? Despite this, I'm sure we will get to see Edmure, Tully, and the Blackfish fighting for the Starks. So don't fear if you're a Tully fan. House Tyrell and the Reach. Although the Tyrells do have notable bannermen, such as the Hightowers and the Tarleys, Mace Tyrell and his bannermen spend most of the books and show either serving House Baratheon or House Lannister. I hope we get Tyrell forces that are dual faction so we can use them in both forces. House Bolton, House Frey Alliance. Speaking of dual factions, what about the Boltons and Freys? It wouldn't be impossible to form a faction out of these two houses, and I definitely want to be able to recreate the Battle of the Bastards from the show. I'm hoping these houses come with rules that allow them to fight for both House Stark and House Lannister, as the Boltons especially could have some really interesting fear-based mechanics. Although, if the Boltons have their own faction, then we could see Reek as a non-combat unit, and that'd be fun. 
House, Aaron, and the Veil. I'm sorry if you're an Aaron fan, but I don't feel like there's enough unique or memorable about them to really justify them as their own faction. House Royce wears ancient bronze armor carved with mythic runes into battle. And that's the only cool thing I can think about of the whole Veil. In every other way, the Veil is just another faction made up of knights and footmen that are indistinguishable from House Tully, House Tyrell, House Lannister, and House Baratheon. House Lannister and House Baratheon have unique leaders to set them apart, and the Tyrells and Tullys will probably be rolled into other forces. But I just don't see a place for House Arryn. Okay, that covers the Great Houses of Westeros. Which are you most excited to see? There are definitely other factions that will be making it into the game, and I will talk about them in my next video. Please like and subscribe to get more videos speculating about the Song of Ice and Fire Miniatures game.